Today we're sewing up the zipper sleeper from Gus and Steel. This cozy sleeper is the perfect addition to any little one's wardrobe and you have a fun few options to choose from when sewing it up. You can choose to add the elastic at the ankles as we'll show you today. You can choose a neckband or binding for the neckline and you have a few different sleeve options. You can either choose cuffs or binding for the sleeves. And if you choose binding, you can also add the optional fold-over mitts as we're doing today. Before you start, make sure you have all of the pieces you need. Here we have the two pieces of front bodice, the back bodice, the long zipper guard, the short zipper guard, which is just a one by two inch piece of scrap fabric, the zipper, some quarter inch elastic for the ankles, and then I've chosen to do a neck band. We have the gusset, the ankle piece, the footy bottoms, and the footy tops. Let's get started. Lay your back bodice together with your two front pieces, right sides together, and clip the shoulders neatly together. Go ahead and search the shoulders closed. Now we're going to add the neck band. We'll start by folding the neckband in half lengthwise with wrong sides together. Then we'll match up the short edge of the neckband with the front edge of the bodice. I like to clip both ends, then I'll find the middle and clip that too. As you can see, I'm matching up the raw edges of the neckband to the raw edges of the neckline. Now serge your neckband in place. Let's add the elastic to the ankles next. I love the look of the elastic at the ankles, but it is totally optional. To do this, you'll just measure one and a half inches up from the bottom of each ankle and mark it with clips or pins. Then we'll take this over to the sewing machine and switch to a zigzag stitch. A quarter inch zigzag should work or you can even go a bit narrower if you prefer. Start with a very short stitch to tack the elastic in place. Then switch to a stitch length to something a bit longer. On my machine, that's about a three. And stitch across the elastic while you stretch the elastic slightly to fit. You may find it easier to do with a longer piece of elastic, then you can just cut it to fit after you sew it down. When you get to the other side, you'll switch your stitch length back to a very short one and tack down that side of the elastic too. Go ahead and add the elastic for both ankles. Now we're going to create the long zipper guard. Now we're going to create the long zipper guard. It's not quite as tricky as it seems if you take it step by step, I promise. Start by folding it in half with right sides together. You're going to take this over to your sewing machine and stitch around that top curve. 
I actually like to start on the opposite side than what I showed you here and then I taper it at the end. That way I can backstitch to secure the end when I start, but when I taper off, I'll leave the long threads to tie off. For most machines I've worked with, this is the only way to avoid the machine eating the fabric and securing the stitch. So tie off the end with a double knot. cut off any extra threads, and then we'll turn the zipper guard right side out. I like to give it a good press here to make the next steps line up a little bit easier. Now we're getting really close to installing the zipper. The first thing we're going to do is to fold this little bit of extra zipper tape towards the back. We'll just clip it there to keep it out of the way. Then, on the zipper guard, we'll measure approximately an inch and a half down from the top. You can see where I've lined up the ruler, and then we're just going to make a little clip in the raw edge of the zipper guard. Okay, now with the zipper guard behind the zipper, so that means the side that touches baby's belly, we're going to line up that mark we just made with the folded down zipper tape. Put that in place then fold the extra bit of zipper guard over the front of the zipper. Then, I'm just going to line up the raw edges of the zipper guard with the edge of the zipper tape. Now, to make installing the zipper a little bit easier, I like to baste this all together using the zipper foot. You can see now that the zipper guard is behind the zipper to make sure that baby doesn't get a pinch. And that little bit of extra zipper guard we folded over will keep the tab hidden from baby's chin. Now let's add the small zipper guard. For this I just cut a small piece of scrap, it's about 1 inch by 2 inches, and I'm folding it in half to basically make it square. So this goes right at the bottom of the ankle with the folded edge at the top and the raw edge is lined up with the edge of the ankle. Then you'll go ahead and baste the small zipper guard in place just along the edge where the zipper will be installed. Now everything's ready for the zipper. With the zipper face down on the bodice, I'm lining up the top of the zipper guard with the top of the neck band. I'll clip that in place and then line up the raw edges of the zipper tape in the bodice, clipping all the way down. Then you'll just use your zipper foot to sew the length of the zipper. Now we have the first side of the zipper attached. I like to clip the zipper guard out of the way so I don't end up sewing it up with the other side of the zipper. Now 
before you line up the zipper, you'll need to fold that little bit of excess zipper tape at the top to the back side. And then with the zipper sleeper inside out, I'm just matching up the right side of the bodice to the front of the zipper. The front being the side with the pull tab. Make sure that the bottom of your ankles line up with the other side that your small zipper guard is in place against the front of the zipper, and that the neckline is nice and even with the other side as well. Line that all up, and then using your zipper foot again, sew down the zipper. remove those clips that are holding the zipper guard out of the way and then I like to check to make sure my zipper is in good working order and everything lines up. Now we're going to trim off any excess zipper tape at the ankle before we add our little ankle piece. piece just gets lined up right at the bottom of the zipper with right sides together. When you take this over to the serger, you may want to hand crank for the few stitches that are near the zipper to avoid breaking needles. to attach the gusset. I'm just matching up the center notch first. Then I'll clip the rest in place on the front bodice. You'll surge just around that part of the curve. Now we'll sew the rest of the inseam with the cusset. So, with right sides together, I'm just going to match up the ankles. match up the center of the gusset and then I'll add a few more clips to make sure it's all in the right place. And then go ahead and search the whole inseam. Footy tops are next. I like to match the center of the footy and the center of the curve first. And 
then I'll match up both ends. When you serge the footy tops on, you can essentially pull the curve out straight to make it easier than trying to navigate the curve. Let's work on the sleeves and mitts now. You can only do mitts if you're sewing binding for the sleeves, so you'll need two sleeves, two mitts, and some binding. Now there's not really a front and back to these sleeves, but you're going to end up creating fronts and backs when you add the mitts, because the mitts need to be on the back sides of the sleeves. We're going to fold the mitts in half with wrong sides together. We need the folded edge of the mitt on the sleeve, and then I'm lining up the raw edges. You can see I'm going to have one on the left, and then one on the right. That's how we'll want them to be when we finish the sleeves, but it doesn't really matter now. I'm just folding the sleeves in half over the mitt, and then I'll clip it there and do the same for the other side. Then I'm just going to use a straight stitch to secure the mitt to the sleeve. I'm actually showing you the opposite direction than what I actually will do. You'll want to start at the bottom of the sleeve with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then sew up the sleeve and taper off. I'll start by backstitching a couple of stitches, but when I get to the end I'm not going to backstitch to secure it. I'll just leave the long tails and tie them off with a double knot in the next step. So now our mitts are attached. Make sure you've got the whole length of the mitt in the stitches. Then you can tie off the loose threads at the top of the taper with a double knot. Now you can see I'm laying out the mitts opposite again. And I do that because we're going to bind the ends of the sleeves. So you need to make sure now that you'll have two mirrored sleeves when you're done. Go ahead and lay them out so they're opposite and bind the bottom edge. You can neatly trim off the excess binding and then we'll attach the sleeves. So I'm going to lay out the bodice with right sides up. And then I'll lay down my sleeve with right sides down. And I'm going to make sure the mitt is towards the back. I'm just matching up the center of the sleeve with the shoulder seam and adding a few more clips to make sure everything matches up. Then I'll do the same with the other side. If you did the mitts correctly, you'll have two mirrored sleeves, and so the other one will already have the mitt facing towards the back bodice. I'll clip that second sleeve in place, and then we'll
we'll just sew the sleeves on. So the sleeves are on and the mitts are towards the back. Now we'll sew up the side seams. up the ankles and the armpits and the ends of the sleeves, making sure we have the binding lined up nicely. You'll clip down the length of both sides sew the side seams. Now since I have these serger tails, I'll tuck them in with a darning needle and then I'll trim them off. do that with both sleeves. And then I'm going to take the sleeper over to the sewing machine and tack the seams down towards the back. While I'm doing that, I'll also tack down the neckband seams. We'll add the bottoms of the footies now. With right sides together, I'm just matching up the notches with the center front and center back, and then all around the foot. I like to push my seams towards the back. So as I'm clipping, I push them and clip them. When you sew the footies, I recommend that you start at the back of the heel to keep any loose threads away from baby's toes. Go ahead and serge all the way around each foot. For this last step, Instead of threading the serger tails back through like we usually do, I recommend sorting out the threads and then tying them off with a double or triple knot and snipping off any excess thread. This is just one more way to ensure that baby's little toes don't get tangled in any loose threads down the line. you're done.